Well, it's the unbearably sad statistic that shames the state of Daniel Andrews, Victoria. Last year, 65 boys and girls known to child protection lost their lives. We know it thanks to leaked documents. Many of these children were left in dangerous homes even after multiple warnings to child protection. Now, it is beyond unacceptable. For Victorian Liberal MP and Shadow Child Protection Minister, Dr Matthew Bark, this is an incredibly personal issue. He joins me now from Melbourne. Matt, you started your life in care as a ward of the state. You're now a member of parliament in the same state. That's a pretty powerful change of circumstances. How's your experience of the child protection system in Victoria influenced you as a policymaker? Well, thanks, Peter. In particular, my experience, I think, has given me a really unique understanding about how our care system can be a really powerful force for good. So for me, being born into the care system has never held me back. Um, I spent the last, sorry, the first rather, 14 months or so of my life um, uh, as a ward of the state, as you say, and the chief adoption officer at the Brotherhood of St James and St John was my legal guardian before ultimately I was adopted by a wonderful family, my family. Um, and they called me Matthew because that name means gift from God. Um, that's how loved and supported I've always been. So I know how the, the care system can be a powerful force for good, but as you said in your intro, Peter, that's not under Dan Andrews how our care system operates. In fact, for a record number of vulnerable Victorian children, being born into the care system uh, is literally a death sentence. And you say it's in crisis. You look at those statistics, 60, 65 children dead, 65 children dead, mm. and many of them um, left in homes where authorities were warned on multiple occasions that they were in threat of their lives. How does that happen? Well, I think there have been um, years and years of failures that the Andrews Labor government hasn't wanted to, to seriously look at and seriously address. I do think things got even worse last year as a result of the COVID bungles of the Andrews Labor government, but still we can't look past ongoing failures that watchdogs like our um, Children's Commissioner in particular have been seeking to shine a light on for such a long time. So 65 children known to the Andrews Labor government died um, last year in the care system. That's a macabre record in the history of our state, up 150% since 2018 alone. We saw sexual offences against children rise by 88% last year here in Victoria. One in 10 young Indigenous Victorians tonight, Peter, one in 10 is in the care of the state. That's worse than any other Australian jurisdiction, even the Northern Territory, which we know has such serious problems. Um, and so you're right, we most certainly are in a dire child protection crisis. And coming back to your question, what troubles me so deeply mm. about that is that clearly, even today, even after all of these revelations, Dan has no plan to fix this crisis that he and his government has created. What impact did, uh, well, we've had four lockdowns in Victoria, but the big one last year, 111 days, what sort of impact did that have on the system? Well, the whistleblower that you talked about in your intro, Peter, said that um, the long lockdown did make it harder for child protection workers and for workers at other charities here in Victoria to get out and to seek to, to care for and protect vulnerable children. Uh, last year, we know that sexual offences against children rose by a staggering 88%. And one of the reasons for that is we know that um, some very vulnerable children were locked in their homes for 23 hours a day with their abusers under a curfew for which there was no uh, medical evidence. So the COVID bungles of the Andrews Labor government and its failures in uh, hotel quarantine and contact tracing um, did have an impact, but I don't want to overplay that impact because over many, many years, the Andrews Labor government has been warned about its child protection failures and the impact that would have. For example, in 2017, um, independent research from Social Ventures Australia said that unless there was a new plan to fix Victoria's child protection system, we'd see a doubling mm. of the number of kids in care in our state, 
to 26,000 by just 2026, and that a huge proportion of those kids would be Indigenous kids. But still, the government produced no plan. COVID hit, and that did make matters worse. When you talked about your personal story before, you know, you make it clear that, that adoption was your salvation, that you, you, you had a, a family that raised you, that loved you, uh, that's given you, you know, all the advantages in life and you've, you've absolutely taken them and run with them. I, I don't know the Victorian system as familiar as you do, but I had a lot of uh, exposure to the work of Prue Goward in New South Wales, who, who took on the institutional reluctance of, of the officials and the bureaucrats to adopt children out that were in long-term care. And, and she took the view uh, that families had, uh, you know, a couple of years with all the resources of the state to get their life back on track. But after that time, she didn't really want to see children in, in a constant perpetuity of uh, foster care home after foster care home or institutionalised care, that they deserved a chance of a permanent home and a family. What's your view on that? I certainly think that far more needs to be done to provide our most vulnerable kids with greater permanency. So, as you said, we see so many vulnerable Victorian kids bouncing from one foster care placement to the next. Now, I think foster care is a, a angels. I was in foster care. Um, and yet, um, wherever possible, it would be fantastic to see vulnerable Victorian kids um, in more permanent placements you're right, just like in other jurisdictions, there has been a real reluctance to look at more permanent options, and they include adoption. Certainly, my personal story isn't a hard luck story. It's a, it's a good luck story, and for, for large part, that's down to the love and care of my family. So I'd love to see far more Victorian kids provided with the sort of opportunities that I've had. Um, right now, we know, under Dan Andrews and under this Labor government, that's certainly not the case. I tell you what, it's a tough topic to talk about child protection, but I, I'm, I'm really thrilled to have someone who's had a first-hand lived experience of it. He's now in the parliament and on the front bench for the opposition prepared to, to speak up for these children. Dr Matthew Bark, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Peter.